Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing uh, okay. Um, it, let me start out this way. Let me start out this way. It took me. It, there's 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 something that I that I, I I've always said for for years and years and years. Trading for I, I don't care what your level of trader is. You could be trading for uh, two weeks. You're trading twenty years, right? Any, anywhere in between. By the time the week is done. Okay, whether you made money, lost money, broke even, whatever the case may be. Us as traders, we spend so much time, so much mental equity in this game. Whether you're trading to make $100 or $100,000, it doesn't make a difference. We put in so much mental equity. Okay, so by the end of the week, literally at the end of the week at 4 o'clock, I, I used to tell you know traders all the time, it takes me usually about two hours, about two hours, hour and a half, two hours to kind of get back to being myself, um, literally because of all the weighted pressures we have, uh, the mental buildup anticipation that certain traders have, uh, all of this, you go through all these emotions. We try to really be as robotic as possible, systematic as possible and all that good stuff, but we're still human beings. So it takes so much out of us, really. Uh, it really takes so much out of us. So by the time four o'clock rolls around on Friday afternoon, I'm a vegetable. I mean, I'm literally a vegetable. And you know, my wife knows, and my wife is is programmed to know if you want to have a serious conversation about anything important, literally anything important uh, in life, wait till about six o'clock. Just well, give, me, give me like an hour, hour and a half, because I can't even formulate the sentence. I think a lot of traders like that. And the one thing that we are, we're a band of brothers and sisters, right? We might not know each other, okay? We might not know each other. We might have never crossed, path, cross, cross paths, uh, ever interacted with each other. But this is, a, this is a brotherhood. This is a sisterhood of people who are involved in a business that's not even real, okay? That was pretty much brought to the forefront 25, 30 years ago, right? For people actively... Uh, managing their portfolios and the only people that could really understand, I mean, really, really understand what we go through uh, on a day in, day out basis on a weekend, week out basis is other traders. Okay. Is other traders. Our outlets are to other traders, our wives, our husbands, our, our kids, our spouses, our friends, they will never understand what we go through. Okay, I don't care how sympathetic, loving they are, supportive they are, they'll never understand what we go through. So it's so important for traders to come together, not even to the point of uh, helping each other financially, right? Helping each other get to the point of financially, but being there for each other mentally, okay? Because if you can't express yourself, what, what's going inside you to another trader, who can you express it to, right? And I kind of made the mistake, you know, I kind of made the mistake. Yesterday, um, I had some free time. Um, I was finishing up my chart work and I went on Twitter, right? I went on Twitter and on, um, I went on Twitter and um, I went on, I think it's called Periscope, right? Periscope, I usually don't do so, but I had some time and I felt, you know, this week took so much out of it. I, I had a pretty decent week. We did, we did pretty well this week. Um, but it took so much out of it. It's like I felt that I needed to kind of have closure for the week. I needed to kind of, um, you know, just really share my thoughts. And once, you know, we did a kind of a, it's like 15, 20 minutes. I was on uh, Periscope and it really made me feel better, right? And sometimes along the way, and this is where I kind of apologized. Uh, <laughs> I said, you know, I, I dropped a couple of F-bombs in between. And sometimes as a trader, as an adult, you need to release that F-bomb, right? You need to release that F-bomb just to kind of center yourself and make yourself feel whole. And this week, you know, we saw such aggressiveness, right? Really such aggressiveness in the market that every professional trader, every aspiring trader 
they really, we really felt our mortality, right? We really felt our mortality mentally. And I, I think, especially because of the social media world, instead of you guys, you know, and I see this all over the place, I really don't get into arguments with people on social media. Again, what are you, what are you gonna argue with me about, right? I mean, what are you gonna argue with me about? I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grown man, I have a family. What, what are you gonna possibly tell me? You don't like my trade? Get in the other side of my trade and, and then you'll really dislike me. Um, so, what, you know, I don't argue with people, but I see so many people arguing on social media, on Twitter, on, you know, this one, that one. And instead of, you know, tearing each other down, help each other, right? Help each other. Everybody's getting, trying mentally to get to the same place. So, you know, try to really sympathize with your brother, with your sister. We're a fellowship, man. We're, we're, we're you know, we are a tribe that nobody will understand what we go through, but other traders. So just keep that in mind. Again, it's just so, it's so easy to be a human being, okay? It's so easy to be a human being. And when we go through every single day, every single week, everybody just really should be uh, much more supportive of each other. So let's talk about the market, right? Let's talk about the market. One of the most aggressive weeks um, I can remember, okay? Uh, very, very aggressive. And what's cool about uh, the new technology, like a YouTube, for example, uh, that all you guys who are joining us uh, just on the weekend, uh, just on the weekend, and you've been kind of following our YouTube channel and, you know, been following me on Twitter and so far and so on, you kind of see, you know, you kind of see every single week my, my, my thought process. You kind of see every single week uh, what we talked about, what we talked about the prior week and what we're, you know, what kind of our mental mindset going forward. And it, it really does uh, go into play how important uh, technical analysis is. And again, we started talking about this every week. You can go by, go back into the YouTube weekly wrap, wrap and you'll see just a week by week, step by step, how the market got to where it did uh, this week. So 4%, right? 4% declines all across the board, right? 4% declines all across the board. If you've been watching uh, this channel, have been following me on, on social media or obviously in the live webinar and all that stuff, you kind of saw how this started out so innocently, right? Very, very innocently. You had this double top that we talked about three weeks ago, this double top, Everything's all good. Everything's all good. Everything's all good. Everything's all good until it's not, right? And then slowly but surely, we started making our way down. We tested the 50-day moving average and bounced. We broke the 50-day moving average, tested the 100 and bounced. We broke below the 100-day moving average, went down to the 50, and we didn't bounce. We didn't bounce. And when you look at when you look at the aggressive selling this week, right? You're talking about, again, 4%, 4% declines all across the board, right? All across the board. The market didn't care about uh, China anymore. Didn't care about the trade wars anymore. Didn't care about anything. The only thing that mattered was gravity, okay? Was gravity. Our opinions, again, I say this all the time, our opinions mean absolutely nothing, okay? Uh, I've always crowned myself the king of the idiots, okay? I My opinion is less than nothing. All these candles, all these supply zones, all these demand zones, uh, my process, that's the only thing that matters, okay? That's the only thing that matters. What's greatest, the greatest thing about uh, trading is, you are, you are number one, your own worst enemy. Okay. And your own, your own, you know, your own hero. And the, it's the ultimate courtroom, right? If you don't like somebody's position, get on the other side of the trade. If you don't like the mental uh, process of what another trader is going through and you think they're wrong, get on the other side of the trade. So it's the ultimate equalizer. The market is the ultimate equalizer. And when you are trading, you're not betting on companies. Okay. I don't bet on companies. Okay. So for example, somebody uh, yesterday on social media turned around and say, well, you're wrong about Amazon. Amazon's going to 2,400. And my re reply is, no, it's probably, it's probably going to 3,000. It's not going to 2,400. It's probably going to go to 3,000. So, you know, everybody has different styles of trading. Everybody, everybody has different ways of looking at the market. And, but again, the ultimate common denominator it's still technical analysis. And we've been, you know, talking about this decline and decline and decline and decline, and it became very, very aggressive to the point of not only did the bulls, in my opinion, uh, drop the ball several times this week and had several opportunities to kind of reclaim uh, before we got technical damage and they failed to do so. And on Friday, uh, on Friday, it was really, really obvious. It was very, very obvious. So we had this big, nasty, pullback, right? Big nasty pullback. Um, went down like 13, 1400 points on the Dow, you know, really aggressive selling on the NASDAQ 100. And the absolute worst thing happened on, uh, the absolute worst thing happened on Friday uh, for the bullish case. We gapped up, right? We gapped up. And so if you were trying to take a position or trying to, to, to really take advantage of good companies that are mispriced, that will be higher in the next two to five years, 
your job was to get long yesterday, okay? Your job was not to get long after a 400 point uh, gap up, okay? It's just the truth, it's just the truth. And I tweeted this out, uh, I tweeted this out pre-market. Um, anybody, I mean, realistically, 95% of all the companies pre-market, you know, the stocks that I watch, the Amazons, the Netflix, the beta, right? All the stuff that I watch, 95% of them, literally, they all gapped into supply, right? And they all gapped into supply. And all I was saying, you know, I kept on, I tweeted this pre-market, I tweeted, tweeted this pre-market, the value on the long side is gone, right? The value on the long side is gone. Matter of fact, if you go, um, if you go, um, if you go through my feed, right? If you go through my feed, I mean, this was it. I mean, this is this is at uh, what time was this? This was at uh, this is at, this is at eight o'clock in the morning. This is below. This is before eight o'clock in the morning. I mean, I, you, you you could see it happen. The worst case scenario for the bull case was right in front of you. So I wrote, well, so some ninety five percent of the stocks are gapping right into the supply zone, which basically means the meat, the mashed potatoes, string beans, etc., has been eaten. Now you are left to fight over the crumbs from the bread. The value will be on the downside today. Very, very specific names. Patience is key. This is, this is, this is not even at eight o'clock in the morning. The futures are up like 350 points. So it was crucial. It was absolutely crucial, you know, to have a valid process, have an opinion, have, uh, you know, just have an understanding why stocks stop where they do. And you just saw all of them really hit supply, like all of them hit supply and it, it took me, you know, at this point on Friday, as everybody knows, by Friday it rolls around, I'm already, you know, I'm already exhausted. I speak uh, seven hours a day, uh, seven hours a day in the live webinar. I'm constantly speaking to traders. I'm trading. It takes a lot out of you. So by Friday rolls around, I'm just looking for value. I'm just kind of look to, looking to uh, add on to the week. And if I don't see anything, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to go out there. So I, I think a lot of traders, uh, I think a lot of traders, and again, I call this, the arrogant bull, right? The arrogant bull. Well, that was the bottom. The market's going to go higher. Maybe it will. Again, I'm an idiot, right? Keep this in mind. I'm an idiot. I don't know. You know, it's not my job to know. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know. Okay. And at this point in my life, I don't care. I trade ranges. I trade the top of the range. I trade the bottom of the range. I have no bias. So whether you think Amazon's going to 3,000 or 300, that's your opinion. And you, you're allowed to have your opinion. But for me, as a trader who trades ranges and has no bias, I'm with you. I hope it goes to 2,500. I hope it goes to 1,000, depending which way you're looking at it. I'm with you. But as long as price action is confirming what I believe is going to happen, I will be with you then. I might not be with you an hour from now, but I will be with you then. And that's the most important part about trading. It's not putting yourself, tying yourself in a box. It's not painting yourself a perma bull, a perma bear. You're a trader. You're an opportunist. And I say this all the time. God gave you um, two ears, two eyes, two feet, two hands, right? Use both sides of the market. It's okay. It's okay. Trust me. It's okay. Nobody will hate you. It's all about getting value. And what we saw on Friday was probably, at least in the beginning, at least in the beginning, probably the worst value cases I saw. And we echoed that statement and we pretty much uh, stuck to our guns, right? Stuck to our guns all day. There were like three or four pivots at the open. We'll talk about them in a second. But most important part is I had the bias. I trusted technical analysis. I knew exactly what I wanted. I, I knew exactly what I didn't want. That's which, which is very, very important. And I waited. Okay. And the hardest thing to do is wait, right? Patience is a very loose term. Okay. Very, very loose term that a lot of traders use. But a lot of the traders, especially new traders, they don't know what they're patient for. And that's the scariest part about it. They don't know what they're studying for. And that's the scariest part about it. You could put in hours and hours of study time and hours and hours of back testing. But if you don't know what you're looking for, you just wasted an hours and hours and hours. So it's very, very important to really understand why patience is a virtue, why patience is so very, very necessary. And again, it's not about the trade. It's about longevity. And Friday played out that way. Play, you know, Friday played out that way. Um, again, from the macro point of view, okay, from the macro point of view, I personally don't think we're at the bottom yet. Okay, I personally don't think at the bottom. And the reason why I say that, we lost 400 points off the Dow yesterday. Okay, if you look at the intraday, uh, if you look at the intraday of the market yesterday, and this is a 60 minute view, uh, let me just show you the 60 minute view of the, key, of the spies. So here is the gap up, right? Here is the gap up into supply. Actually, excuse me, this is the gap up right here. Here's the gap up, right? And we lost it all, right? And then we rallied and then we lost it all. Okay, so 
If this was truly the bottom, and guys, keep this in mind, most bottoms are not, are not made on a gap up. Think about that. Most bottoms are made on a capitulation window when nobody could take it anymore, when your mother who doesn't know the difference between the stock market and the supermarket is calling and say, I think the stock, I think the supermarket is broken. Everybody's losing money, right? When people like that start calling and telling you, is everything okay? That's when you know we're getting to the bottom. Again, it's the whole capitulation, throw the baby out with the bathwater. We didn't get that. We got the opposite of that. The absolute worst thing that a long-term perma bear could want is a gap up after a really an aggressive, majestic week of selling, and we didn't get that. And the worst part about that is we had so much volatility. It was so aggressive, right, throughout the whole week that Friday when I logged off, I, I, when I logged off, I think the Dow was up 30 points. And um, this was around three-ish, right, 233-ish, whatever it was. And I literally said, I have no idea what's going to happen. The market could either get, go up 300 points or sell 300 points. It, it's that random, okay? It's the case, who wants to be, actually be long into the weekend and who actually wants to be short into the weekend? Again, depending if, this, if you believe this was a bottom or not. And that's what happened. I mean, that's literally what happened. We went down 150 points and then we went up whatever it was, 150 points, right? So it was so erratic, so aggressive. It was so knee-jerk reaction that again, a lot of traders, what we talked about earlier, burnt mental equity. It <laughs> really burnt a lot of mental equity. And this is where you really got to take a step back. You know, like right now I'm back to, you know, it, it really took me a whole day. It really, really took me a whole day to kind of get back to being the jolly old self that I am. But, you know, like right now, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm perfectly centered. I'm very, you know, I'm fine. I'm you know, ready to go on to my weekend prepared for uh, the next trading week. But it really took me a lot of time. So I think what we saw, um, I think what we saw was, number one, no materialistic selling, right? There's no materialistic selling. Everything that was on the table uh, for this week, you know, the trade war, all that good stuff, right? It was on the table for the last year. We've had this majestic rally. What we've seen is a classic case of gravity. That's it. We saw a classic case of gravity. And again, you can have your little tidbits, side notes, sidebars here and there to say exactly why we went lower. But again, if you look at financials, for example, it took them a Herculean effort not to completely lose everything yesterday. And this is all the and this is all the earnings and all the good stuff and blah, 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 blah. So the, the bulls really, really dodged a, a bullet. And the bullets, you know, the, the bulls really dodged a bullet yesterday. And if you look at if you look at the close. We barely, again, to take this for what it's worth, we barely, 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 barely uh, held on to the 200-day moving average on the SPY. If we were to close below the 200-day moving average, and again, it's, you know, it's, as they say, baseball is a game of inches, whether the bullet hits fair or foul, it could be within an inch. The bullish case got saved for now, right? For now, and that's all it is. And again, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear, I'm an opportunist. I speak reality. If you've been watching me for a long time, I speak technically. I speak reality. I don't, I don't sit there, stroke anybody's ego, or sell you a dream. This is reality. This is where we are right now. You can, you can fight it all day. But again, we, we, we literally reclaimed, um, we literally we reclaimed the 200-day moving average just in the last knee-jerk reaction to the market in the last you know half hour, 40 minutes or so. So take that for what it's worth. So if you believe, if you believe this was the bottom, okay. Uh, if you believe this is the bottom, again, just be careful. If you believe there's more selling coming down the road uh, next week, just be careful. Again, trust your process. Trust technical analysis. Again, our emotions are there and are usually reserved for our family, our home life, our children, our dogs, right? Don't put your emotional intake. Don't put your emotional, um, you know, uh, engulfing state of mind in your position. It's the worst thing you can do. You got to think clear. You got to be ready. You got to have both. You, know, you got to have both sides of the market ready to go. And again, let price action dictate to you which way is your next possible move. So let's get into it, right? Let's get into it. Um, again, not a lot of value, right? Not a lot of value uh, in the tape. Uh, the week was very, very strong. Um, the, the, one of the most aggressive things, uh, like we traded. I, I mean, I traded Amazon a lot of the week. I told you, I, I spoke about that even. Uh, during during the per periscope uh, session, and you know, just an incredible ranges, very very aggressive. The spreads are just out of control the whole week. But again, uh, your process again will be the king. So here was Friday's pivots. Uh, here was Friday's pivots. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of value. Uh, the, the four names, the four names that I put into uh, the private Twitter feed, 
were the only only names that I saw that actually had room into supply. Okay, that you could actually trade into supply. But again, you had to make a choice. Did you want to buy Nvidia up ten? Did you want to buy Tulo up five? Did you want to buy Am- Apple up seven? Right? Did you want to buy Tesla up eight, nine points? This is your choices. And you know, again, again, as professional traders, as adults, we make our living living with our choices. So these are some of the choices you had to make. And I, I, I'm saying this right now. I didn't take any of these trades. I was just, I, I just couldn't see myself buying Apple up eight, nine points, knowing there was only like 70 cents worth of upside bias. You just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I mentally just couldn't pull the trigger on these trades. I know some of you guys did. Okay. And I know some of you guys did well. Uh, I had a pretty solid week. At, at this point, I just want to see what happened. But again, if you look at the pivots and again, the greatest part about these pivots uh, and everybody asked me again, a lot of new traders asked me again, what's the difference between alerts and pivots? Okay. So, <laughs> okay. Again, I say, try to put an alert out on the video. Try to put an alert on Tesla. Try to front run 500,000 people on Tesla and see exactly what happens. And you'll know the difference between what an alert is uh, and what an organic pivot is, a stock needs to build, what institutional money flow uh, in and out. But again, you know, he, th- these are the pivots. So, and it's, you had Apple, uh, again, what's great about these things, nobody has to be in these trades with you. They're either going to confirm it or not. It's the greatest thing. It's the greatest, greatest thing. So here is the supply, right? You're talking about the 220, right? 220 on Apple, uh, 220, 220, 220. And they've just, just, just exploded. It just absolutely exploded on NVIDIA. Same thing. You know, we talked about uh, right over here. We talked about uh, what price was it on NVIDIA? In NVIDIA, we had 245 build, right? 245 build important. Uh, again, here's the 245 build exploded, right? Exploded. You know, a couple of you know, a couple of points, but again, you're buying these things up ten. It's just, it just I, mentally, I couldn't keep, wrap my head around there. Uh, Tesla two sixty twenty needs to build again for cash flow. Nobody's saying this thing's going to go for another ten. It, these are just cash flow moves. Uh, here is the pivot on on Tesla right over here. Here is the two sixty twenty right two sixty twenty, and here is your cash flow went to uh, two sixty two almost a couple of points. Um, Apple we talked about Apple we talked about too low right needs a strong. Uh, 73 build to spike. Uh, again, here's too low. Here's a spot on too low. Uh, here's a spot on too low. Here's the 273, right? 273. And you got the push. You got the push to that 273 level. So again, I didn't, you know, usually I trade all these, you know, usually I trade all these setups because these are going to be, you know, these are going to be very, very aggressive. I just couldn't pull the trigger mentally of buying Apple of nine, buying, you know, you know I just couldn't do it because I understand uh, what we were up against. But again, that's individual choice. Uh, so I kind of just waited. So I kind of just waited, 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 and I waited for the market to kind of uh, give us more indication that I was right for my technical approach. And you just started seeing, you know, these these pivots started building the wrong way. And I wrote here. I mean, here's a perfect example of just waiting, not being attracted to the scoreboard, just waiting for your process to play out. And I, you know, I tweeted this out. I go, Boeing, it's heavy. It's heavy. You could see it was heavy. You just couldn't rally with the rest of the market. If it starts building below the uh, 262 60, 262 50 level could flush. And again, here was Boeing. I mean, here's probably one of the biggest, uh, biggest, smoothest moves of the whole day. So here's your candle, right? Here's your candle into support, put in a low of uh, 262.70. So again, go back to, you know, go back to the private Twitter feed. If it starts building below the 272 60, 262 50 level, it, it, there's a shot it goes lower, right? And not only goes lower, it sold off all the way down to 252. I mean, this is a five point a five point move without an uptick, literally without an uptick. So just, just, you know, again, you just have to wait and trust your process. Again, you don't trade because the market's open. Uh, you're trading, right? You're trading because uh, you're trading because you're getting value. That's the name of the game. And I think if you're, if you're a new trader, you really have to take, remove that social media mentality out of your head. That you have to trade every single second. It's all about value. And again, here, you know, again, we talked about here's the end of supply, right? Here's the supply 255. And I said, Tesla, it's heavy, right? It, you know, and I, I took the short. I took the short. didn't take any type of size on it. Um, it was almost like, it, it was almost like ridiculous to even take, but I took this trade, right? I took this trade. Uh, Tesla heavy um, just didn't rally. Just didn't rally with the last push of the futures if it confirms the bottom channel. And again, here's the bottom channel. You can see the price, 255. Here's the bottom channel. If you get one more candle, it confirms it should go lower, right? And again, then I, then I tweeted it out after the fact, right? 255, line in the sand, huge support on the rising 60 minute. It needs a strong build below to flush. And again, here's the setup on Tesla. 
right? Here's the setup on Tesla. Here was the 255, right? Here's the 255. Like I said, it needs to confirm. And it went from 255 and went all the way down to 252. Again, is this the biggest trade in the world? But no, you know, a $3 move is still a $3 move. And obviously, then volatility uh, brought it back up. So it, it was a very, very aggressive week, incredibly aggressive week. I personally don't think, and again, this is just in my opinion. Again, I could be wrong theoretically every single time, as long as I'm not wrong financially. I'm not boxed in. Right now, gut feeling is the lows are not in. Okay, just the gut feeling lows it in. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm good with that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know what? If I'm wrong, I'm buying stocks going higher. So again, am I really wrong? Right? Again, it's not a game. It's not a, you know, we're, we're not in a, a flexibility of a, of, a, of a job title that we have to be right. Okay, we have to be right financially. We don't care about being right. I don't care about, I don't care about the accolades. This is the guy who called the bottom. This is the guy who called the top. We want to make sure we are putting ourselves in a position that we are around for tomorrow. And the only way we're going to do that is properly evaluate risk, properly evaluate our sentiment, and obviously have a process uh, to make good on it. So, um, you know, going into this week, again, gut feeling says uh, we have not seen the lows. Can we rally on Monday? Yeah, maybe we could. You know, maybe we could. But just from what I saw, just from the fact that several times throughout the week, I just didn't get that sense that the bulls were confirming enough bias to reclaim, okay, just reclaim. And that, that last rally was the only thing that uh, saved us from having a technical breakdown damage uh, going over the weekend. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So just in case we rally, right, just in case we rally. And again, I'm going into this week, 70-30 sell bias. Again, that could quickly change Monday come the first candle and everything will be good again. But going into the, this uh, week, I am... Um, I, I have to assume I, I have to be 20, 30, 70, 30 sell bias. Um, but just in case we rally on Monday, uh, let me give you guys some ideas. Uh, let me give you guys some ideas that I do like. Okay. Let me give you guys some ideas that I do like. Uh, let's talk about Amazon. Let's talk about Amazon first. So Amazon, uh, you know, Amazon had a big, it was up a hundred. I mean, it was up a hundred. I mean, and I joked around, I was like, who does anybody really want to buy the stock up a hundred points? And then yada, 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 the stock goes from uh, 808 all the way down to uh, 17, you know, 42. Again, call me crazy. I can't be in a stock that goes down 70 points. Maybe you can. I can't. Um, you know, and I've been doing this for a little bit of time. It's a little bit tough holding a stock, you know, going 70, you know, 70 points against you in a matter of two hours. Just saying. Um, but again, in case we start rallying, right, here's a two-sided trade. You know, here's a two-sided trade for you. Again, no bias. Uh, it needs to confirm either 1810 to get it into the 1830s, right? This 1810 channel, or it needs to confirm the bottom of the channel here, 1742. Again, everything in between for me is irrelevant. Okay, I know the I know the beginning of the story. I know the end of the story. I don't care about what happens in between. Only thing I care is is uh, channels that are confirming. So uh, 1810 to the upside, 17 uh, 1742 to the downside. That's all I care about. Netflix. Uh, again, you know, can we rally? Yeah. I mean, look, you know, here's the top of the channel right here. You know, here's your channel, top of the channel here, uh, 341.50, right? 341.50. Can we get a move to 345? Yeah, sure. Why not? We can get 345. We can get to 347. Uh, and if it confirms to the downside, right? Here it is, 328.90. Again, top of the range. We know the top of the range. We know the bottom of the range. I don't care about anything else. Everything else is 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 completely irrelevant to me, completely irrelevant. So top of the range, bottom of the range, we got that cover. Uh, NVIDIA, same thing, you know, NVIDIA, same thing. And again, I'm not gonna put a hundred pivots uh, into this uh, into this update, but you kind of get the point. Here's the top of the range on NVIDIA, this 250, you know, this 249 and a half level, this Bollinger will either be up or down, uh, or the bottom range here, right? So two, you know, 249.50 to the up, uh, 239.50 to the down. Again, everything in between means absolutely nothing for us. And the last one, let me give you guys is Apple as well. Again, you, you know, you see it, you know, you see it. Here's, a, here's your flag, right? Here's your flag. You're buying in the top of this range or you're shorting it below this range. Obviously, watch futures. Uh, watch how stocks react on a macro channel uh, to how the futures react. And most important thing is, again, be a responsible adult. It's not okay to give away your money. You can have a losing trade. You can have a losing day. You can have a losing week. You can have a losing month. But do not give away your money based on emotional or you know, emotional decision making. It's all about technical analysis. It's all about longevity. Guys, God bless. Have an amazing, amazing rest. Enjoy your life. It's all about love. It's all about love, guys. Support each other as a community. I don't care if you're sell biased, buy biased, whatever your bias is, 
We're a brotherhood. We're a sisterhood. It's all about us. It's not, nobody will ever feel what we go through on a single, on a single day. So support yourselves. Okay. It's just so easy to be nice to somebody. Okay. It really is. It's so easy to be nice to somebody. You know, again, be an adult, be human guys. God bless. Love you all. I'll see you all next week.